Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News for this Wednesday, October 30. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is concerned about how the police high command handles issues relating to domestic violence within the force. In its quarterly report, Indicom noted one case in which a spouse reported the aggressive behavior of an officer. The officer was removed from an operational team and counseling sessions initiated. A further complaint forced the high command to seize the officer's service weapon, but it was returned after another round of counseling. There was, however, little change in the officer's behavior. A few months later, he killed his girlfriend during an argument. Indicom is therefore recommending a review of policies relating to police personnel keeping their service weapons while off-duty. The oversight body is also awaiting outstanding reports on counseling sessions. Indicom says the lack of such reports highlights the ambiguous application of rules within the police force. Meanwhile, Indicom is reporting that they received 236 categories of complaints from 201 incidents between April and June this year. Indicom noted that they received the most complaints for assault, discharge of firearm, shooting injury and fatal shootings. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded the highest number of fatalities, 9, St. Catherine 6, St. James 4, while Trelawney and Clarendon recorded one each. St. Elizabeth, Hanover, Westmoreland, Manchester, St. Thomas and Portland did not report any fatalities for the period. Meanwhile, Indicom also reported that there were five deaths in custody. Technology Minister Favel Williams says Jamaica is working to improve its cybersecurity response. She was speaking in the House of Representatives yesterday. Cybersecurity is considered as one of the most profound challenges that confront global governments. 6.4 Ernst and Young Global Information Security 2018-19 said 6.4 billion false emails were sent worldwide are sent worldwide every day. The average cost of a data breach is more than US $3.4 million. That data is frightening and it's even more disturbing as the cyberspace is considered as the fifth common domain after land, sea, air and out of space. The magnitude of the need for a cyber secure environment must be considered against the fact that more than half of the world's population or some 3.9 billion people have access to the internet. The Custis of Manchester Garfield Green wants the new police commander, Superintendent Gary Francis, to tackle driver indiscipline in the parish. We have motor vehicles driving around at red lights, blue lights, the LED lights on their vehicles, the noise nuisance, the motorbikes that are traveling across the, our roads with loud noises. Yes, the entertainment that take place within the parish disturbing our, 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 our citizens. These are things that we are asking the incoming superintendent to tackle. So that's when people, people know that they are entering Manchester. They have to be on the lookout for the police. The Costa spoke to TVJ News following the official change in leadership of the Manchester Police Division. Superintendent Gary Francis has taken over from Superintendent Wayne Cameron. The St. Mary Police are investigating a break-in at the Galena Primary and Infant School last night. Thieves entered the school from the Infant Department. However, it's not clear what was taken. TVJ's Prince Moore reports. On Wednesday morning, students of the Galena Primary and Infant School in St. Mary turned up for classes, but instead were greeted with this. A tampered door lock to the Infant Department with several tablets scattered inside and forensic crime scene investigators busy on the compound. Acting Principal Marcia Frost said she was at home when she received a call that thieves had broken into the school. This morning about 5 o'clock, one of the watchmen, Mr. Wesley Crichton, called to say the school was broken into. I told him that I wasn't feeling well, but I will come to see what happened. When she arrived, Miss Frost realized that the infant department was broken into. The front door to the old infant department was tampered with. When I went inside, the library door was open and the door to my office was open. 
basically some of the tablets were removed from where they were, some were on the floor, and when I went into my office, I did not actually see anything that was done. However, she was unable to say if any of the tablets were missing. Ms. Frost laments that this is the third time thieves have targeted the school in recent times. The first time when they broke in the school, they took food items. That's basically what they took. Then she then come help them for help his school, help the children in high school. Uh, help his school. Then she didn't have broke his school. Then she then look for help his school. The children them need them breakfast this morning and couldn't get any breakfast because of that. But we're getting thanks anyway. No life has not lost. In 2015, the school received 200 tablets under the government's Tablets in Schools initiative. Prince Moore, TVJ News. And it's time for a break, but stay with us. We have more stories right after these messages. Welcome back, and we're continuing the news. Unions representing employees of Jiska Alpart in Nain St. Elizabeth are reporting that progress has been made during yesterday's discussions about plans by the company to cut jobs ahead of an upgrade of its plants. The National Workers Union, NWU, says during the 12-hour meeting, the unions placed their concerns and suggestions on the table. A response is expected from Jiska Alpart at another meeting expected to be set for next week. General Secretary of the NWU, Granville Valentine, says among the major points to be dealt with is the matter of the retention of the Jamaican workers during the upgrade of the plant. The workers were handed letters serving notice of redundancies on Heroes Day. Mr. Valentine says the unions requested that the letter be withdrawn and reissued under the guidance of the Labor Ministry. The company had referred the matter, right? We had only one meeting at the Ministry of Labor. They went and they served a letter of notice on, on a public holiday without the knowledge of the ministry or any agreement between we and them. So we requested that that letter be withdrawn. The, the wording of the letter is also ambiguous. And as a result, we also believe that it should be, it should be clear. It should be understood whilst you're at the ministry that the, the ministry and the, and the parties understand that any steps that are going to be taken must be decided there. The blood bank has declared a blood shortage crisis in the island. Blood drive organizer at the blood bank, Odin Black, says an increase in the number of persons with dengue has led to an increased demand for blood. He's therefore urging persons to donate blood. The only way we can come out of the crisis that is that persons come in to come and give blood. And, I, and just to remind you, you don't have to have anybody in mind. You just say that you have the willingness to help somebody. Whether you know the person or not, you just say that you're willing to help to save a life. And we will do the rest. Mr. Black was speaking at a blood drive in Montego Bay, St. James, where he issued a call for individuals as well as organizations to join the effort to bolster the country's blood supply. To make sure that we continue to provide for every day, we need as much person come out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to anyone in the blood banks. They can visit us, come and say that they come to donate blood. You don't necessarily have to have somebody in mind to donate for, just come and say that you're here to give blood. The basic requirements must be 17 to 60 years old and just have something to eat. Come along and we will do our checks to see if you are able to give blood. If you're not able to, I'll say what you can do to sort it out, come back another day. And if you can do it today, then we'll go ahead with it. And time now for a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the health report, we look at treating wounds. If you are a diabetic and you get a bruise on your toe or a foot anywhere, that because diabetic wounds are not healed proper, um, what you call, readily. It take a longer time to heal. So as you get a, if, you, if something stuck you in the foot or bruise or anything, you have to get to a doctor. Yeah, you have to see a doctor. That's the health report this evening in Primetime News. And now for today's healthy living tip. Keep the dressing of the wound dry. Protect the wound from bumps, pressure and the sun. Always wash hands before and after touching the wound or when changing dressings. Watch for the signs of infection and seek medical advice if one develops. 
And in sports, the owners of Jamaica Talibas have reaffirmed their stance to keep the franchise in Jamaica, but there are plans to shift the number of games to be played at Sabina Park for the 2020 season. TVJ's Renata Brown reports. First and foremost, uh, we run in the business, and uh, we have to look at the bottom line because there's, there's a tremendous amount of expenses in running a, a franchise in the CPL. Uh, but we will, uh, in, in consultation, we are talking to management, we're talking to government to see how we can move forward um, next year. But if you look at it last year, we had the two games here and it was almost solo games. What I can see from folks in Jamaica is that they love winners. And if you're winning, they're going to come out. If you're losing, they're not going to support you. But while plans of moving the franchise have been shelved, the owners are still looking for other avenues of maximizing their investments. My commitment is to probably have two games in Trelawney and three games here, and that's that's what I'm looking to do next year. Um, so to answer your question, yes, Jamaica would be um, the location for all five games. Miller also hinted at Chris Gale. And, and um, again, um, we are looking to a total reassessment of the team, and that would occur during the draft and um, before and after the draft. In the meantime, the Tala has donated cricket gear to two young players on Monday. Former Papine High player Shamar Edwards was grateful for the equipment. The other player was national under-19 captain Kurt McKenzie, who recently returned from a West Indies under-19 camp. Um, it was a good experience just knowing that um, all the years of youth cricket is being recognized. Um, we went to the under-19 camp, just really hoping to be on the under-19 team for a World Cup in South Africa. The presentation was made at Sabina Park. Renata Brown for TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, the sports and production teams, good afternoon.